If I look at f of x here, if I want to test for whether it's even or odd, I'm going to evaluate f at the opposite input. So I'm just replacing all my x's with the opposite of x. So this would be the absolute value of the opposite of x plus 3. But I know the absolute value of the opposite of x is exactly the same as the absolute value of x. And that gives me exactly the same formula as what I get for f of x. So opposite input gives me the same output. f of x is going to be even. All right, let's take a look at g of x next. So for g of x, it's the same, oops, it's the same test. I'm going to evaluate g at the opposite input. So again, I'm replacing that x with the opposite of x. But then I just got the absolute value of the opposite of x plus 3. Now, I can't use the absolute value to obliterate that negative sign because the negative sign only applies to that term, not to the 3, but the absolute value applies to the whole thing. So this formula is not the same as the formula for g of x, but it's also not exactly the opposite of that. Because if it were the opposite of that, I know this formula is giving me something that's never negative. The opposite of g of x would give me something that was negative. So this one is neither. Now, if you're trying to prove whether something is even or odd, you do need to work with arbitrary things. But sometimes, if you're not quite sure, wait, can I use the absolute value to get rid of that negative sign or not? It might be helpful to just give yourself an example. So if I wanted to look at g of 2 and g of negative 2, g of 2 would be the absolute value of 2 plus 3. That's the absolute value of 5. That's 5. g of negative 2 would be the absolute value of negative 2 plus 3. That's the absolute value of 1. That's 1. I didn't get the same thing. I didn't get the opposite thing. It's neither. If your function is neither, an example is enough to show that. However, this function we said was even, if I were to look at f of 2 and f of negative 2, I'd say, okay, that's the absolute value of 2 plus 3. That's 2 plus 3. That's 5. This would be the absolute value of negative 2 plus 3. That would be 2 plus 3. That would be 5. Opposite inputs gave me the same output. That does not prove that this function is even, even though it is. Okay. All that shows is that for this particular input, when I plug in the opposite number, I get out the same thing. In order for the function to be even, that has to be true for every input that I plug in. So to prove something is even or odd, you've got to work with arbitrary numbers. Specific examples can show you that it's neither, but specific examples will never show you that something is even or odd. So I recommend that you always write out the arbitrary case. But you can use a specific example if you're a little bit unsure about whether you can simplify things in a certain way or not. Here, if you were tempted to get rid of that negative sign, this specific example shows you, no, I couldn't get rid of that negative sign. This is not the same as the absolute value of 2 plus 3, because I know that negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1. Okay. So I recommend using specific examples just if there's a case where you're not sure about your next step in simplifying. All right, if I look at h of x to check for whether it's even or odd, I would look at h of the opposite of x. So that means I'm replacing each of those x values there with the opposite of x. So this would be the opposite of x squared minus 2 times the opposite of x cubed. These parentheses are necessary. This says you are plugging in the opposite of x. Now, for the opposite of x cubed, I know that that's going to be the same thing 
as the opposite of x cubed. Okay. So those two negatives will make this a plus 2x cubed. But for x squared, the, the opposite of x squared, that's just x squared. Okay. If I wrote this as the opposite of x squared, that's something different. Because this says square x and then make it negative. So that is not the same as this. So the notation is important. When you are plugging in the opposite of x, the opposite of x, if you're taking it to a power, that needs to be in parentheses. And then if you take it to an even power, the opposite sign goes away. If you take it to an odd power, you can drop the parentheses, but you've got the opposite result. Do make sure that you are justifying things correctly because I'm, when I'm grading your work, I'm not just going to look at the result. Did you tell me it was even, odd, or neither? But did you justify it using correct notation? All right. So if I look at this, this is neither exactly the same nor exactly the opposite. Not a big surprise because I had an even power and an odd power. So the first terms are the same, but the second terms are opposites. All right. I do want to just caution you, though. Don't assume that if you have a mixture of even and odd powers, it's going to be neither. I want you to take a look at this next example. f of x equals x squared plus 2 over x cubed minus x. I want you to evaluate whether that's even, odd, or neither. And then I'm also going to have you do the first three questions on the worksheet. So the first thing that's on the worksheet is even and odd functions. If you've got the worksheet, definitely use it because those graphs are going to be a little bit nicer than mine that I'm graphing right here. But I will very quickly draw the graphs up here in case you don't have them. So here's the graph of a function. I want you to just using the graph tell me whether it's even or odd or neither. And then the second example looks like this. And the third example looks like this. Okay. And if you've got the worksheet, the pictures are a little bit neater than the, the versions that I've drawn here on the board. I'm not great at drawing things freehand, but we'll just be able to get through this together. All right, so try these problems. This problem where I gave you a formula and these three where you're taking a look at the graph. Uh, try those three problems before you tune in for the next video.